In this video, I'll be showing you the three steps you need to take to build systems in your agency, which we've conveniently called the three I's. Building systems might be the next vital step you need to take to get your agency to the very next level. Creating effective systems in your agency can improve productivity and communication between your team. It can empower your agency to scale. And most importantly, it can finally win back your freedom as an entrepreneur or CEO and ultimately unlock your freedom as an agency owner by removing you from the day-to-day -day operations so you can focus on what really matters, whether that's the next business opportunity or finally taking that break you deserve. Now, if you're interested in this sort of thing, you can check out my How to Systematize Your Agency mini course in the link in the description below and find out if your agency is ready to systematize. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Sam. I'm a certified Notion consultant and process expert, and I help agency owners go from unorganized chaos to systematized order with Notion. So let's dive into the video. Your project management software. Before we dive in, you'll need a trusted project management software where you can store and manage all of your systems that we're about to build. Our strong recommendation is Notion. And yes, I am a certified Notion consultant, but the reason for this, systematization is all about bridging the gaps between different processes, people, and technology, and avoiding different silos of information and people from appearing. And Notion allows us to create all-in-one solutions that brings all of that information under one roof. Notion is also 100% customizable, which means, number one, we can create tailored solutions for whatever our different workflows within our different departments are. And two, we can innovate and adapt those solutions as our agency grows. If you'd like to start learning more about how you can use Notion as a team, you can check out my video here, Notion for Teams, um, to get you started. Step one, identify. To begin systemization, we first need to identify which systems we have in the first place. We found the most effective way to do this is to begin with process mapping. Process mapping is a super powerful exercise that's used by a ton of process experts, um, but by very few agency owners. It allows us to visualize the different processes in our business and get them down on paper and out of our head so that we can begin to adapt and improve upon them. Now we can process map at any sort of scale from really zoomed in to super zoomed out, but we recommend going for mid-level mapping, which would be capturing the different steps or processes within one of our systems. So which system should we begin with? Let's start with our highest impact system. And generally that's wherever money changes hands either side of that. So that might be your sales system for when you first contact a client all the way to them signing on, or it may be once they've paid their invoice and the fulfillment system to how you actually deliver your service or product. To walk us through this, I'm going to be working with my imaginary coaching company, aptly named Coaching Co. And for Coaching Co, their fulfillment system is slightly more complex and demanding, so we're gonna begin with that. So over on Whimsical, which is a free whiteboard tool, we're gonna to begin the process mapping of Coaching Co. And to start this off, I'm gonna introduce you to a few shapes. The first one is a circle. And the circle is going to represent our start and our stop points. And the reason for this and um, for defining this is because process mapping, as I said, can be at any scale. And so in theory, you could process map your entire business in one go. But we wanna make sure that we're focusing just on those points in the process that is we're defining as our fulfillment system. For us, that's when the invoice is first paid. So I'm gonna put invoice paid over here. And our follow-up email is sent with our request for a testimonial. We're now going to sit down and ask ourselves the same question over and over. What happens next? And if you're working in a team, this is a great opportunity to get all of the key stakeholders in a room and do this as a collaborative effort. As an agency owner, you may feel that you know all of the processes like the back of your hand, um, but typically the person who is in the weeds doing the process day in, day out will have some key insights that you may have overlooked otherwise. And to represent these steps, I'm going to be using the rectangle shape just to distinguish it between the start and stop points. So after the invoice is paid, I'll ask myself what happens next. And for us, we send an onboarding email, which has information to book on for the first call. And to show the flow of the events, what I'm gonna do is actually use an arrow to direct that. So you can see the invoice is paid and the next event or the next step that happens is this onboarding email is sent. Then I ask myself the same question, what happens next? For us, we then have our first session. So I host first session 
And then we ask ourselves what happens next. And what happens next is we send another email with another booking link for the second session. So send email with booking link. And this goes on and on until we finally have our final session and then send our follow-up email. So I'm gonna add those steps in now. Now during this process, I forgot to um, remind myself that there's actually a goodbye email that we sent before the follow-up email. And so I've added that in here, and this is a good opportunity to show if there is a space of time that you want to represent on the on the uh, process map, you can add that in with the length of the arrow. So for example, each of these steps are probably equidistance apart, probably the same amount of time passes between sending the email for the booking link to hosting a session to sending an email, so on and so forth. But between sending the goodbye email and then the follow-up email, we might typically wait 30 days. So to represent this, I'm going to add an arrow in here and I'm gonna make sure that there's a, a larger amount of space between the arrow. And then what I can also do is add a bit of text in here just to say that this is 30 days that passes. So this is a nice visual way to show if there's any particular steps that take uh, a time in between that is important. Now at the moment, this is a really simple and linear process map that we've done here, and we haven't added in any variables. So let's add in a variable that Coach & Co might have for their current existing process. So for example, after we have paid the invoice and sent the onboarding email, um, there may be the opportunity for the um, client to decide how they want to uh, continue with their engagement. So what I'm gonna do is add some space in here, and then I'm gonna uh, add a third shape, which is a diamond. And this diamond is uh, a diamond for the reason that it's a decision is being made. So D for decision. Um, and so what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna remove these arrows and bring everything closer. And then I'm gonna add the flow into this decision. And then the decision that the client can make is if they want this to be a VIP day so we can host the sessions all in one day, or if they wanna do the usual route, which would be to have all of the sessions one after the other. So I'm just gonna put VIP day question mark in this decision box. And then I'm going to use the normal uh, flow would be VIP day is no. So I'm gonna add a bit of text here that says no. And then we would go into our usual linear process map. And then what I'll do is I'll add a second step here with a rectangle. And this is going to say host VIP day. And I'm gonna add a second arrow here that points to this box. And this is if the client does want the VIP day. So they would have said yes. And I'm gonna add yes in here. And so now the invoice is paid, we send the onboarding email, and then the client can decide if they want a VIP day. No, they'll go on with the usual engagement, yes we would host the VIP day, which would have all three sessions done in one day. Now, the final thing I'm gonna add here is just a arrow that basically shows that once we've done that, we would then usually go on to sending the goodbye email as we normally would. And you can see that this is running in parallel with the other steps, um, but this is just another, another route to our final delivery. Improving our systems is what happens in our final step, so we'll wait till then to do that. You also notice we're not capturing who does what step or how each step is completed. We're simply capturing the what for now. So the next thing we need to add to this process map is the stages of the system. And this essentially just helps us collect uh, the system into subsystems and stages. And later on, you'll see how we implement these stages inside of Notion. So to do this, I'm just gonna take a rectangle shape and put it above the very start and I'm just gonna reshape this so it's a bit more of a line. And I'm gonna think to myself, what is the natural grouping of these different processes? And for me, immediately I'm seeing we have the invoice paid, onboarding email, VIP day, and then once we host either the first session or the VIP day. So I think that first section um, resonates with me as being the onboarding stage of this process. So I'm gonna add onboarding here. Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that and ask myself, what would be the second stage to this? And for me, I would say up until hosting the first session all the way to the final session or for the VIP day, just the VIP day itself, that is in essence the delivery of our service. So I'm gonna write this, stretch it to our third session, and I'm gonna make this delivery. And then finally, I'm gonna duplicate across this last stage and I can see that we have the goodbye email and the follow-up email. And naturally, I would see this as the offboarding of our clients. So I'm going to just resize this to go to the follow-up email. And I'm going to call this offboarding. 
So now we have accurately and successfully uh, mapped out one of our systems inside of our business using a whiteboard tool like Whimsical. Just take a second to register how that feels. How does it feel to have one of your systems, whether it's very complex or very simple, to actually be mapped out visually so not only can you understand it, but the rest of your team can understand what the system looks like. Now we have mapped out our system, we're ready to move on to the second step, which you can look at in our following video here. Again, if you want to speed ahead, you can download my How to Systematize mini course um, in the link to the description. But otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.